Hey everyone, it's Alex from the PCRI. In today's video, I asked Dr. Scholz to share some major updates that we have from the 2021 ASCO meeting. ASCO stands for the American Society of Clinical Oncologists. And those are basically meetings where researchers from all around the world come together, and this year it was virtual, and share their updates and their research. The reason we're gonna be sharing these studies is because it's gonna be really beneficial for our future to see how the standard of care may change in prostate cancer. It may not be super applicable today, but it is good to know what's coming down the pipeline. We hope you find this video educational. A couple interesting things are coming out now in 2021. Uh, one is uh, related to men that have metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer. This is a situation that arises when men um, don't get their PSA tested and show up at the doctor's office with some pain in their bones. PSA is over 100 and uh, they've never had treatment and the cancer's already spread. Studies have shown that these men respond well to a combination of Lupron plus Zytiga and uh, the addition of Zytiga to the Lupron has been shown to extend survival compared to giving Lupron alone and then giving the Zytiga later when the Lupron becomes um, uh, ineffective. Same thing's been shown uh, if men are treated with Lupron plus Taxotere, uh, type of chemotherapy, uh, and large studies, again, confirm that the men that have this situation of hormone-sensitive metastatic disease should be on Lupron and Taxotere from the get-go. Don't wait for the Lupron to stop working and then start the Taxotere because those people don't live as long. What hasn't been uh, understood till now, until this uh, recent report, is uh, how will men do if they take Lupron plus Zytiga plus Taxotere, all three agents? Kind of makes sense to do that because they kill cancer through different mechanisms. And the combination, logically, you would think, would extend survival to a greater degree. And that's what this study confirmed. Uh, a study was finally done where half of the men were treated with a combination of Taxotere and Lupron, and the other half, uh, the other half of the group got Taxotere, Lupron, and Zytiga, all three in combination. And there was a two and a half year extension in survival in men that got the combination of all three drugs. So what logically seemed to be the case has now been uh, proven in a prospective trial. And the standard of care, in my opinion, now for men that have metastatic hormone sensitive disease is to go on a combination of all three medicines, Zytiga, Taxotere, and Lupron, uh, when they're diagnosed with this sort of metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. Another interesting report coming out of the 2021 ASCO meeting relates to the use of Zofigo in combination with second-generation hormonal agents like Zytiga and Extandi. A couple of years ago, it was reported that the combination of Zytiga and Zofigo caused an acceleration in the incidence of bone fractures, a negative outcome that was rather unexpected. And now uh, we are told as experts not to combine Zofigo with Zytiga. This is sort of counterintuitive because usually com combining um, effective agents gives better cancer outcomes. And it is desirable to use things in combination as long as the side effects are not, uh, are are not made worse. So uh, what's interesting about this report from ASCO is they're looking at uh, a study where they combined Extandi with Zofigo, Extandi being a competitor to Zytiga, a second generation hormonal, th hormonal therapy. And in this report, they showed that if you gave bone protective agents like Zometa or Denosumab, otherwise known as Exgeva, that the incidence of bone complications was dramatically reduced and almost eliminated. I think that this is an important report because it is desirable to give agents in combination uh, in men that have dire types of hormone-resistant hormone uh, prostate cancer. And uh, it's good now that to know through this report that these agents can be combined if preventative agents, protective agents, to uh, prevent the, um, uh, the bone fractures that are known to occur in men that are getting hormone deprivation plus Zofigo. 
Briefly, why are these men getting bone fractures? Well, we know already that osteoporosis is accelerated with all forms of hormonal therapy. So FIGO is a type of radiation that um, attacks the bones and the cancer in the bones. So that combination has um, uh, been shown to exacerbate the risk of hormone um, uh, resistant patients getting this a these agents and, uh, and bone fractures. So this uh, is uh, an encouraging report that now we may be able to give these things in combination, Zofigo and Extandi and possibly Zytiga, as long as bone protective agents are given at the same time, bone protective agents like Zometa or Exgeva. Another interesting report from the ASCO meeting relates to the use of um, high-dose testosterone in men that are becoming hormone resistant. Uh, this is a very intriguing concept that has been uh, floated over the last few years as um, being a rational and possibly effective way to treat prostate cancer. Uh, men are administered a single injection of testosterone once a month, and a certain percentage of men are having declines in PSA and regression of their cancer. This particular approach was studied in a uh, report that uh, combined testosterone with a um, immune medicine called Opdivo. About 40% of the men had significant declines in PSA, uh, averaging about six month remission, but some patients uh, with remissions as long as a year or, or even more. And the side effects, as you can imagine, were, um, were quite tolerable. Men enjoy getting their testosterone back, and the Opdivo medicine uh, has a known uh, spectrum of side effects. Uh, Opdivo has been used for lung cancer and melanoma and other uh, situations, not FDA approved for prostate, and uh, people that are interested in this protocol may run into difficulty getting it covered by their insurance. It's an expensive drug. But it's encouraging that this idea of giving testosterone to men with hormone refractory disease uh, may indeed be a useful approach. And this is just one more study suggesting that this type of treatment is here to stay. And uh, in combination with other approaches or as a standalone treatment might indeed be a viable way to treat men with hormone refractory disease.